All right, how's it going, prehistoric crew? Welcome back. I'm gonna start on one of these babies today, and the community poll has been going for, I think, three days now, and there's been 15 votes, which is awesome. So thanks for everybody. Thanks to everybody for voting in that. We got 10 votes for the root beer chert, and five votes for this obsidian here, which I'll work next after this one. Keep that in the background for now. So yeah, believe it or not, this is actually gonna be my first time working root beer chert, which is crazy because I've been napping for like 10 years and you know, it's one of the kind of holy grails, I guess, of, you know, nice chirts to work with a lot of character in them. I don't know. Anyways, um, yeah, so I just finished the Silver Sheen Obsidian videos and points unfortunately broke that one but managed to pull out a bunch of nice things or a few nice things and this weird thing yeah there will be a separate or there was a separate video for that before this one comes out anyways okay so with this piece you can see the cortex is you know about two or three millimeters thick all around and right under it is some really good quality you know nice nice chert and um, so I think you know because this face is really flat I think I just want to skin off the cortex here and I think you know kind of I'll see when I get into it anyways but I think kind of near the edges or the exterior you know is the nicest quality the best quality and then kind of closer to the middle might get a little bit, you know, concrete -y or lesser quality. I don't know, we'll see what happens, but first things first is I'm just going to zigzag around the edges, get rid of all the cortex around them so I can set up good platforms. Um, you know, do that now, do the zigzagging with short flakes, trying to preserve as much width and length as I can, and then once I figure out what's going on in the middle, then I can decide which you know axis I'm gonna have my tip and base I'm thinking it's probably gonna be something like you know this will be the base here and then the tip something like that I'd like to make a wide wide thin biface if I can anyways so this is the hammer stone I was using the bigger one for obsidian and softer shirts but it's it's pretty soft it's like a sandstone so I don't think it'll it'll work on this tough shirt. So I'm gonna use this nice quartzite cobble. I'm pretty sure it's quartzite. Again, I've got a different camera angle, so I can't really see the screen, but I'm just gonna start napping and this uh, this should all stay on camera here. Yeah, it should be all right. I'm gonna need to look at this piece a little bit first. I'm tempted to try and take off a big flake here to get rid of this high spot. You can see it's, you know, a thick bulge here and then it's really thin everywhere else, but I don't wanna do that yet. That'll be, you know, that's a bigger, bigger risk than I need to take really. Take some smaller flakes to test things out. Yeah, pretty nice material. I'd like to get a few larger flakes out of this so I can, you know, try and make some some smaller points too.
probably should actually kind of take a larger flake there to get things get things rolling here it would make things a little easier along this edge later I actually take one at kind of an angle here and then start working that edge Pretty small and just cortex, really. The stone itself seems to work fairly easily. Like it's a good quality. <laughs> Way too timid on these strikes. There we go. Fix that up just a little bit. Time to regroup from all over the place here. I need a better leg pad, definitely. Yep. When in doubt, just smack a big piece off of it. These flakes are really cool looking with the kind of cloudy cortex still on them there.
that up a little bit. I just kind of need to go for it and get a big flake off here to skin that cortex off. 
don't have the best angle here. one works pretty well after all. Maybe I needed something softer, coarser grained. clean that mess up at least. like a Laval walk core where I'm kind of setting up a steep platform here to take a almost Laval walk like flake to get rid of the rest of this cortex then I'll flip it over and try and skin it from the other face maybe this will be my length in the end not sure and do this with the big antler. I think that might work with this stone and this platform. I don't think I could quite hit it properly with the hammer stone. So here goes.
beautiful. That was awesome. So awesome that I'm gonna finish the video right there. Cause my heart's racing. <laughs> that one felt really good. Really good. So now this is a nice face, clean of cortex and you know, really good quality here. I can just take a few flakes to clean up these ridges, make it really nice and flat, flip it over and work on this face next. I think that's a pretty good start for this piece. I'm not sure what I'm gonna make out of it yet, but yeah, right now I'm just trying to get it as thin, long, and wide as I can while it's still in the direct percussion, you know, initial bifacing stage, raw nodule reduction. But this is a really nice flake. I'm not going to call it Lavalois because I wasn't, you know, planning on it the whole way through. It's just, you know, a nice thinning technique. But this flake can definitely be used to turn into a little point or something. It's a nice one. Or I'll just use it as is, as a tool. You know, as a, a Lavalois flake is meant to be used. Anyways. Cool. Happy with the progress on part one of this video. Root beer chert by face, part one, for now. When it's finished, I'll auction it off, whatever I make out of it. Maybe I'll even include this flake in the auction. Yeah, I'll just leave this flake as is. Let me know in the comments if you feel like you or anyone would be buying something like this. Okay. Right on. Well, as always, thanks for watching. Catch you next time. Cheers.